In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the Sammy Atomis Wave arcade platform all set up with RetroArch and LaunchBox. And I'm going to provide my pre configured files so all of the heavy lifting has been done for you. Now, I can't stress enough just how much work has gone into this pre configuration. Not only have I pre configured the controls, I've made sure that all of the game's audios have been lowered so they're not ear bleedingly loud by default. And I've made sure that the volume analog inputs are correct for all the racing games. All of the light gun games have been calibrated. I've made sure that all characters and cars game modes have been unlocked. I've made sure that censored games have had their regions changed so they can be uncensored. So yeah, that's just a few things off the list. And I will provide a full list of exactly what I've done towards the end of the video. But for now, we're just gonna get straight into it. Let's start by getting our ROM sorted out and in the correct location. So I recommend using the games folder within LaunchBox and you want to create a Sammy Atomis Wave folder like I've done here and then place all of your ROMs inside. Now this ROM list here is the full list of working games minus Salary Man because it's so Japanese I can't play it. So yeah, these are the ROMs that you want and I've only pre-configured for the parent versions. So the versions that you see here. If you already haven't done so, you're gonna to wanna to download the Flycast Core. So start RetroArch up, go down to Online Updater, Core Downloader, and we're gonna find Sega Dreamcast slash Naomi. There we go, download that. There we go, I've already got the latest version. So we're just gonna back out of this, and I'm gonna go over to the saving settings. Now, for Sammy Atomis Wave and the Flycast Core in particular, I recommend having this activated. So it sorts save files into folders named after the directory in which the content is located. Now, because Flycast can run Dreamcast, Naomi, Atomis Wave, and Naomi 2, it can get a little bit confusing when you're trying to sort through all of the NV mem files and also your save states as well. So I recommend leaving this on so you know exactly where all of your saves are. Now that we've got our core downloaded, we need to get the pre-configured files and place those in the correct locations within RetroArch. So bring yourself over to this LaunchBox forum page here. The link will be in the description below and the download link is just here. But on this page, I've given a full overview of exactly what I've done and I will be touching on that in just a sec. But first, we're just gonna press download this file and we're gonna download the NVMem Atomis Wave, the config files, and the remap files. Don't worry about these just yet. So download all three of these. Now that we've got all three of these downloaded, we want to place those in the correct location. So we're gonna start with the NVMem files here. So you shouldn't need to unzip it because the file's so small. So just open it up, bring it over here. And then we want to go into the RetroArch file system and go into the saves folder. Now, depending on how you have your saves set to save, the RyCast folder that we need could be in one of three locations. And yes, I did say RyCast. This folder is just a remnant of the old days. So your RyCast folder could just be in this file location here. So you just go into saves and you might see RyCast here. It might be in a folder called Flycast or if you've done what I showed you earlier on, it's gonna be in a folder called Sammy Atomis Wave. So that's where it is. There we go, there's the RyCast folder. So I'm just gonna select all of these and just pop them in there, nice and easy. Let's move on to the pre-configured remap files for your controls. So again, just open it up. You shouldn't need to unzip it because the files are so small. And then in the RetroArch file system, go into the config folder. And then we want to go down to remaps. So there we go, there's remaps. And depending on how you have these set to save, it all might just be in this remaps folder in one big folder. But if you've done what I've done, it will be separated into Flycast. So let's select all of these, move these over. And I've actually already got these in there, but I'm just gonna replace them. And there we go, that's all of your controls sorted out. I've also provided layout images on the LaunchBox forum page for every single game here. So you need never be lost with buttons again. And I've made sure that I've remapped these perfectly. So if a fighting game has a modern console counterpart or port, I've remapped it to the defaults for that modern port. 
Everything else I've remapped to be as intuitive as possible. Now these last files, these RetroArch config files, are actually for the two player mouse support for the light gun games. And they are completely optional. So if you do want to use these, we do need to do one thing in RetroArch first, which you may or may not want to do depending on your setup. If you do want to use those files, you need to start RetroArch up with no content, go over to the settings and go into the input and scroll all the way down to port one controls, go all the way down to the gun inputs. Now, if you have anything set here, you need to remove it. And this is because if we have inputs saved on a per game basis, like we have with the configuration files, and if they're set here as well, they're going to clash. So remove these if you do want to use the two player light gun mouse configuration files. After you've removed those inputs, you want to just open up the folder. Again, no need to unzip it. Go into the config folder and go into the flycast folder there. And then just pop them in there. There we go, nice and easy. Now that we've got all of these files in the correct location, we can jump over to the LaunchBox side of things and get everything imported. And then I can show you my recommended settings for the Flycast core. So just open up LaunchBox, go up to Tools, Import, ROM Files, and press Next. And we want to add a folder. So we're gonna go into Games and find the semi Thomas Wave folder where our ROMs are located. There we go and then press select folder. Press next. Then you want to find Sammy or Thomas Wave on this list here. If it isn't there, you will need to manually add it yourself. But there we go, Sammy or Thomas Wave. Press next. And then we're gonna find RetroArch. There we go. And then we're gonna set our core. There we go, Flycast. Super. And this sets the associated core for the Sammy or Thomas Wave platform as well, which is nice. So then we're just going to press next. We're going to use the files in their current location. And we do want to search for metadata, so we're going to leave that checked. And I'm not going to tell you which artwork to download, as that's pure personal preference. So I'm just going to press check none, check none, and press next on the bezel project. Now we're going to leave all of these unchecked, press next, and press finish. And we're going to wait for that to import. There we go. Now it should appear in my arcade folder here. There we go, Samia Thomas Wave. Now if you right click on this and press edit, go to parents, you can place that wherever you'd like. And you can even place that in multiple locations. And there we go, that's how to import those games into LaunchBox. The only thing that I need to cover in the core options is the internal resolution. So I'm just going to start up a game, go into the quick menu, go down to core options and into video. Now I like to have my internal resolution set to 1280 by 960 because it's a nice middle ground. Now if you go above this, you might introduce some strange lines into the 2D games. So if that happens, just scale back your resolution to fix that. And another thing that I need to speak about quickly is which back end you're using. So go into drivers, go into the video driver, and if you have Vulkan set here, you're going to be introducing a bunch of weird assets into all of the 2D games. So weird boxes, lines, and it's just going to look like garbage. Only use Vulkan for the 3D games. For everything else, use GL Core. There we go, that's how to get Samia Thomas Wave set up with RetroArch and LaunchBox. Now if you bring yourself back over to the LaunchBox forum page here and you scroll towards the bottom of the page, you can see exactly what I've done on a per game basis. So you can see what audio levels these needed setting to and you can see all of the additional characters that I've unlocked. If there's any cheat codes, they're also listed here and you can see that I've turned the blood on for Metal Slug 6. So yeah, please do take a look if you're interested but do rest assured that if there was an unlockable or something that can enhance the experience, I found it. So rest assured, this is as perfect a build as it can be. Now, you might be interested to know that I've done this entire process for the Sega Model 2 emulator and the Sega Model 3 emulator Supermodel. So check those videos out if you're interested in these builds. 
And if you like today's video, slam me a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.